just like, ooh, Valor. Just, <laughs> just in stops in. All right, everybody. The first qualifier semi-final. We have the HTC qualifier for 2017. Sky Temple, the first map between the Misfits and the Damascus Boy. S whichever team wins here, whichever team takes it, is qualified for the league in 2017 and already has $100,000, which Blizzard gives out to the teams that make it through the entire year in the league. And that helped the players, of course, to just focus on esports completely. As you can see, the draft is pretty fast and color. With me is Tetch, and we're going to bring you the coverage here for our semi final, our best of five. Yeah, and starting off, we already have a big priority onto the tanks. ETC is the first pick for Damascus Boys, giving that over to probably Alex the Pro G, but they did ban out the Zarya, getting rid of her and Misfits, bringing out that global potential with Dahaka. Starting really early with the aggression, and on this map, of course, we have seen a lot of the Haka plays, especially at BlizzCon. Brightwing to counter that out a little bit, and let's not forget that ETC with a stage dive has, of course, that global potential as well. And yeah, at this point, I'm hyped. I mean, this is the best of five that we're having right now. The teams played some incredible matches already in this tournament, and Sky Temple is a pretty cool map also to start things off with. Yeah, I cast both these teams on the first day. Both of them are the two teams I've seen to run Resurrect on Ariel in different scenarios each. So I'm going to get, if Ariel happens, I'm about to get unrealistic expectations here. The one thing that I'm really, which is interesting to me, Sky Temple was always a map that I didn't really hate it to hate to cast it, but it was always the map where I said, like, games are right here, but I, like, I prefer other maps. Now, though, with Dehaka making this huge appearance in the meta, uh, with like teams focusing over and over on globals of all kinds, maybe even a false set coming uh, in as one of the next heroes, the ETC with a priority on stage dive these days, I have to say that Sky Temple is actually one of the most fun maps to watch because you have just like these massive fights happening all over the place, and sometimes it's just completely crazy how fast these fights switch from the bot lane to the top and back. Completely agree. Like, if I had to choose a map and a team, to be like to watch a certain team on a certain map would be my favorite would probably be i'd probably choose fanatic sky temple yeah because it's are... just a good combo yeah they they are really really good when it comes to that but now we have bands on zeratul now first of all zeratul is of course he has received a couple of changes and he is insane right now if you have a good zeratul player the mobility that the hero gets now even faster than with the previous build now that the talents are shifted around is crazy and of course we've seen uh, with players like eternal a lot of zeratul focus vala being banned out by the damascus boys as well and now misfits with actually an opportunity to maybe go into that false stat to have even more global mobility yeah, and that would give them a lot of potential. They could also go with the they could go with the season marks themselves. They may struggle a bit on rotations to get stacks, but the gathering storm with the of course extra cooldown reduction they get from Malfurion would allow them for a lot of poke potential, which could be a decent way of trying to counteract Tychus, who is gonna be trying to shred through their front line. Whoever they decide is gonna be their second front line, as we're still rarely seeing Dahaka as a solo tank. There's the false set, alright. Question, of course, still being when we're talking tanks, is it the Muradin that comes into play? And the fun thing actually is that Muradin, for such a long time, was an immediate first pick on this map, since he can also easily just like claim one of the shrines or one of the temples by his own. But now it looks like Misfits are locking in the damage first. Again, the cooldown reduction with Malfurion is fairly strong here, so that's good for them. They can pick up a second tank then a little bit later. And the Moscow's boys, they have to secure themselves a little bit more damage and probably a frontliner. But keep in mind that there's still a good chance that we might even see a thrall for the solo bot lane at the beginning of the game. We will see if that's what they go with. There's plenty of solo laners left. That is really a personal preference of which one they feel will work better with their comp. The role, like you mentioned, Alarak, very, very strong. Let's see what they go with, but the range damage would still be good for them as well. And there's plenty of options there for them, but Tyrael as the frontliner and can also be the solo laner for Damascus Boys works out. And Illidan! It's an Illidan comp, Kaldor. The hatred of 10,000 years is <laughs> kicking in again. I'm liking it. So that already promises to be a lot of fun here right at the start. I like that. Falstad leaving against that with the Dehaka Shakalaka on top of that. Keep in mind, the one thing that's banned out here is, of course, Varian. He is not allowed. This is the Varian patch, but the hero is too new, so for the official tournament, he's not part. As Saika has already said in the background, it's about damn time, as Muradin is being locked in. So... Why not? Come on, boys, They're you know you want it. him. They're thinking about it. Other options for them would be Johanna here, which would 
drop a blind, but Meridian with the attack speed slow is probably the highest uh, priority choice against the Silithan here. And yes, there we is. go. Muradin locked in, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready, locked and loaded. Misfits versus Damascus boys. The first semi-final at the HTC qualifier number one for Europe. We're going to jump in on Sky Temple and see which of these two teams in the best of five is going to take the lead. All right, I am happy. Likewise here. This is going to be good. Where's my... Too many tabs open. Okay, there we go. Nine out of ten ready. Dehaka, Dehaka makes me makes me very happy these days. He does same here. Like a uh, from BlizzCon, one of my favorite things. For those of you who haven't seen it, who had the uh, virtual ticket, one of my favorite things that from BlizzCon was the Nexus Comedy Hour thing that they had, where they basically got voice actors for different heroes and Heroes of the Storm, and just made them read funny scripts. And they did redid the Legion opening cinematic with different characters. And one of the voice actors was Dahaka. There is no effect on that voice. He could just do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very impressive to see. Okay, let's see if that Dehaka player is also going to be impressive. Game number one, everybody. The game has started. And well, to the left side of the map, we currently have the Misfits. And in this case, of course, up at the top, there's still a little bit of a mistake. My apologies for that, but we're going to switch that out. Here we go. The real team names are finally up. Dartmog on the Haka for the Misfits in blue. We have Nuroki on Sky Temple on Li Ming, Splendor on Malfurion, Blumby on Muradin, and Hazo Obst on Falstad. To the right side of the map, Remaballa with Illidan playing for the Damascus boys. We have Alex, the pro G on Tyrael, Gnappe on Brightwing, Crosby on Tykers, and Eternal is playing ETC. A quick play for the vision immediately made with the two globals. And yeah, let's get this party started, Techa. Yep, we're going to get it started straight away as the team's not going for that big group up in mid and not going for the minion box. They're just put it, positioning themselves so that they can get vision, so that they can prepare to soak the XP. Dehaka, of course, going into the primal aggression, so we have the additional wave clear for him. He's gonna make a presence known at the top lane later on, where before the second shrine phase, the second temple phase is going to start. We have from Muradin also third win taken, so he's not going into block against Illidan here. Not making uh, any plays with Perfect Storm either, going for that faster regeneration so that he can rejoin the fight after a quick move back. And yeah, this is really the match that matters. It's the best of five where one of the teams is going to qualify for the league next year. Yep, so they're both teams with a lot on the line are going to throw everything they can at this. And this is the first Illidan game we have seen today, Kaldor. So we're going to be keeping a very big eye on Remaballer here. And Aswops immediately dropping the lightning onto him to try and get some harassment due to the evasion blocking the auto attacks. But he does come out ahead with this and is immediately able to reposition himself to not get caught by Infernal. Yeah, as he sees Eternal coming and saying like, nope, thank you very much, I already had a bit of beef, I don't need that cow coming into play. Double <laughs> Temple becoming active right now, and this is of course where we are going to see uh, the first action in the game. Moonburn on one for Malfurion, we have also at the same time now the block party for ETC. And as we have up at the top lane, a uh, complete shrine taken for the red team. We see the Haka coming in to try and get a quick drag on someone. But they can't really make it happen. Immediately the Muscus Boy is retreating, which gives, of course, the mid-temple over to the Misfits. However, the Damascus Boys did have control of most of top lane, but Alex pulling back due to Nurok and Darkbok rotating up here to grab a control and steal a couple of the shots. And an immediate rotation from the Damascus Boys to try and counter this by stealing shots from mid. Both teams rotating, not really wanting to fight each other yet, but really just wanting to grab shots to gain an advantage. Remaballa and Hazu still locked in a fierce battle over that bot lane though. Remaballa always trying to make a bit of a play there. By now he went also for the friend or foe. Pre-standard talent of course to take for Illidan. The fight in the mid lane continues as we have Eternal going for a slide. Not hitting anything. Hazu's flying in though. Trying to make a play for Eternal. Bloombi is already pushed back. But Hazu still with a kill potential here. And he no he doesn't get Eternal. Oh, but the moon fire. burn. The moon fire <laughs> of Splendor takes him down. I really thought, I really didn't think they were going to get that. I completely didn't see Splendor there, and I saw Haswell just not do that last auto attack, and I was like, oh no, he didn't do this. Speaking of not doing this, Nape may not survive this. They're going to try and chase him down. They grab the stun, and they're able to burst him down. <laughs> Straight to the face. Brightwing is dead. 
And well, you all know only a good, uh, only a dead Brightwing is a good Brightwing. Uh, that little flying frog has already been taken out for the first time here, but that's an entire level lead that had resulted in for the Misfits. They are really starting this series off with a bang. Yeah, they're putting a lot of control onto the map straight away. Shots-wise, it came out fairly even. Neither team actually taking damage onto forts yet. But with those kills in the side of Misfits, they are putting themselves in control of the map, in control of this bottom lane especially. Now, this is what a lot of teams do. They gain control as much as possible and then put huge pressure onto the bot lane with the objective of killing the enemy's fountains because the first two temples at least are patterned. It'll always start with mid and top and then bot lane. So if you can take down the fountain bot lane, you will have a bigger advantage when it comes to fighting over that temple. Really nice dodge also as we're seeing Remaball uh, going straight away from the root and using his friend of forward talent on level 4 to jump the wall. The early talent on 7 of course gives still a bit of an edge to the Misfits as they're still pushing through. As we explained, Tetra going for the fountain here would of course be great if they can get that. But they also have by now up at the top lane Bihaka who is going to try and just go back to the bottom fight if need be while all the way getting extra experience at the top lane and pushing the lane in. And his wave clear is superior to Brightwing, who we will most likely see for the Damascus boys taking the top lane. So both of the teams, actually only one of the teams, going so far for the night camp. This is a fantastic position at this point for them. This is really, really good for the Misfits. Yeah, we're not even going to see Brightwing as the one heading to the top lane. It was Tyrion for a little bit. Tyrion finally rotating, and it looks like we're just going to see for, uh, just complete ignoring of that bottom temple for the uh, Damascus boys here instead going to put pressure onto mid lane. Okay, so right now, guys, what we are seeing is basically Damascus boys saying we're not going to win this uh, temple that currently is activated at the bot lane. So instead of just going all the way down to the bot, they are trying to make a play in the mid lane to take a few of the structures down. One of the problems that they are going to be faced with is that up to the top, we're now seeing Darkmog with the Haka pushing lanes away, and he's assisted by the night camp. Normally, before the second temple phase spawns, what you will see is both of the teams trying to make a play for the night camp on their side so that they meet up uh, to the top. Depending on the timing, you can try to just like position it a little bit farther towards your opponent tower so that it soaks shots there, or is like the taken down earlier. Brightwing normally, or like global heroes in general, take the top lane then and have the option to go back to the bottom lane fight. In this case now though, we're having uh, just pressure happening, and I'm not really sure how much they can do with this, since Nurok is already on the way in the mid lane. They will have to try and get a couple of structures, more than only the wall I suppose though. What do you think? They definitely are probably going to at least want to get the fountain if they can dive deep with that. Like you said, Nurok is on the way. Darkbok does have Burrow up in two seconds, so he will be able to rotate down here as well. So they're going to put a lot of effort into defending. But like I said, a minimum of fountain, I think, will be a little bit of value. And then hopefully they can rotate up to top lane and start clearing out that bruiser camp. So they have four heroes in the mid lane right now. I'm really curious to see how much they're going to get. The tower, of course, is going to fall. They might also go through the fountain if you really want to. Decide to not make that happen. Top lane is pushing heavily at this point. They are sending people up to the top, but that added temple at the bot lane is at least going to result in a fort. Darkmog is there. Here comes the play. They're completely moving past night camp and instead try to go for the structures immediately as Hazops goes in. Caps the fountain, jumps away from Rammer Baller. Alex is in trouble, barely getting out. The tongue is missing, no drag for him, but the camp is still pushing. Yeah, we're finally going to see the Master's Boys pulling back to start clearing that. Eternal finishing up the shots from this bottom lane. He was able to steal a couple there, the last five. Very why? nicely done there. I'm a little bit confused as to why he was able to do that in the first place. Yeah, I think too many people wrote. I think they were trying to do the whole thing of, we don't need this yet, we can just push and do some extra damage to get more value out of it, but Eternal punishing them for playing a little bit greedier there. I mean, they, you only got a couple of the shots, so it's still at a half level advantage, but I have to admit that at this point I didn't really double check the minimap for the bot lane. They got the four, that's all that they really wanted out of this one anyways. So a few shots fired against the Misfits, not a huge upset for them, but Eternal sneaking that in, that was definitely a smart move on his part. Level 10 abilities are in there now, and that is a half a level window that we now have for Misfits, where they're starting to make a bit of a play for the mid lane here, dropping another fountain. And they have by now isolation, we're seeing them with the Twilight Dream, we have the Wave of Force of course taken, the Mighty Gust, pretty standard builds on their part as they're starting to move up to the top to get a bit more value and feed the opponent's Nightcap. 
Yeah, but they weren't able to capitalize on getting these level 10s as the level 10s have now been achieved for the Masks boys as well. And once again, we see fairly standard stuff. Metamorphosis, Sanctification, Blink Heal, the Commandeer, Odin, and the Stage Dive from the ETC. Uh, Knapper on his way to the bot lane right now so that he can find both of the global heroes are actually at the bottom at this point. Hazop still seeing if someone is maybe waiting for him at the side. And we have up to the top a bit of a battle happening for the vision. I mean the watchtower in general is of course incredibly important since you're always trying to make sure that you have as much control over the map as possible. If you know where your opponent positions himself then you know if you can at the bot lane go for camp, if you can go for boss. Uh, depending on which path you have to take over the map, if you have to go all the way around. So right now, Alex just sees the, uh, sees the camp happening there, runs into <laughs> Azu on the other way around. But there's just no follow-up since all of the rest of the team is just like taking their own camp waiting for it. Yeah, both players are dropping a bit of poke onto each other here. We're going to see Brightwing in the bot lane, going to start trying to poke down the Mercedo camp. But he's be careful as there are three members of Misfits in the bot lane trying to pressure it. Whereas the Damascus boys... Going to put their pressure onto the mid lane here. Going to start taking that shrine and beginning to work down at that middle fort. The structural advantage is quite nice at this point for the Misfits. With the objective attacking the structures directly, it's pretty important that you take as many of them down manually as you can without the help of the objective. And so far, we have seen the Misfits do a really good job with that, especially with the Haka pushing the top lane relentlessly and getting a bit of value thanks to that night camp that he was guarding earlier. Right now, it's just basically Misfits taking the lower part of the map and that also forces their opponent to double check at boss every now and then just because it's easier for the misfits to try and sneak that in. It's a risk of course to have that, but they need to be very vigilant right now, Damascus boys that is, or they could run into a huge problem. Yeah, Thurnal trying to mount up directly next to Darkbok there off in the top lane as he was trying to clear the lane. Both players were ready to come and help their teams with their globals. But neither team, the teams are very much playing around each other. After those first two picks in the early game, neither team seems to want to team fight, but Damascus boys may be forcing it here. Yeah, this is exactly what we talked about earlier. No vision on the map, so Misfits immediately realize there's the potential for boss to be attacked. Hazops double checks, sees it happen, but it also forced them back down, so they couldn't really take the entire fort at the top lane. And this is what this map oftentimes is all about. You're trying to hide your heroes, you're trying to make sure that your opponent has to double check boss, has to double check where you position yourself, you can set up traps in the bushes, and at this point both of them are really on top of their game making sure that there's no sneaky boss just cheekily taken uh, but while well, they're still trying to of course like push these lanes and get a few more structure kills yeah both teams aiming for those structures alex really showing the dominance you can with Tyrael of playing very far forward compared to other heroes due to the amount of escape and engage potential he offers and speaking of the they were thinking about chasing down onto Blumby there but with so many reinforcements showing up they think better off it instead Tyrael dropping his shield onto the minions of mercenaries here to try and help them push up Hazorbs by now is 15 stacks by the way on the Gathering Storm and he went now for the cooldown reduction with a Flow Rider as the level 13 talent so he's trying to get those added uh, hammer ranks and boomerangs in those later fights. Top lane, still with ETC, he has a stage dive available, can join up in the fights anytime that he wants. And we have besides that now also on the side of both of the healers, ice block taken so that they can survive a bit longer if being focused during the fights that are going to happen soon. For now though, the fight, like you said, the fight is happening soon with the temple spawning in the bottom lane. The boss still being scouted and pressured by Damascus boys and like we said before, both the two tank global heroes in the top lane. That fort is doomed, there's no way ATC can clear it, but it's still, ATC can still come join his team when he needs to, which may be soon as they're trying to chase up to Bloodly. ETC jumping down, stage diving, ice block used at this point by Splendor oh, to dodge stunned. the worst of it. Bloomby jumping out once again, but Fawcett is already down as Bloomby turns around with a quick storm ball. Rema is going deep, Commandion in the back line, dishing out the damage. Crosby with one other way, but the silence is in. That could be the end of Tyrael. They're trying to go for a third, but all of Damascus boys is able to survive at least for now. The Twilight Dream drops so much damage. It's a full retreat. Tyrael is taken out here. He turns around to deal some damage, but that was a huge turnaround by the Misfits with that Twilight Dream, just dropping everyone so low in one go. It was also quite the lucky move for Damascus boys that they survived so long. I mean, Tyrael died in the end, but just imagine one hero like Illidan or like ETC falling sooner. All of a sudden, the reset's kicking in for Li Ming. She would have just cleaned house here. Yeah, and it, it, that was so sudden. It looked like they were winning that really well. Like we, we said, with the Tigers pushing in, 
And then suddenly it's like, oh, they all have less than a quarter health and Lee Ming is here. This is the worst possible situation. But like you said, they were very lucky. They were able to get out of there, uh, keeping themselves alive. And as such, with Tyrion now respawned, they are, oh, they are a talent behind now, but they still have everyone alive to maybe make a play onto Boss to try and prevent it. If they could only soak 60, they'd have Holy Ground. Instead, they're relying on Sanctification, which is now up. This is a big risk by the Misfits, though. They had a great silence by Splendor the last fight that helped them. Here comes the Stasis, dodged nicely by Burrow. Yeah, comes an immediate Mighty Gust, but it's not enough. And also, we're having still Tyria. He has trying to go for the fight. He has Remo Ball is going into the backline. Splendor's already low. The Metamorphosis is kicking in, and Illidan takes him down. Darkwalk is also in trouble. Tyrael is already dead as Eternal is still making a play for the boss. And Eternal is solo. Jumps in with the stage jump on the top of Blumby, but he dies upon impact. We have Falstead flying back, but Remo Baller drops him before he can escape here we have misfits losing the boss losing four heroes what a sick battle illidan in the backline cleaning house there at muradin he held every he held three heroes solo for a huge amount of time there but at that point the entirety of his team was dead remaballer just cleaning everything up and 60 was hit during that fight holy ground was achieved the sacrification was dropped very near the start of the fight to block a huge amount of damage an insane fight by the Damascus boys. And also we have Stoneform taken for Muradin. I haven't seen that talent in ages. Usually you either have, I mean, if you don't have the heavy impact, then it's normally the give him the axe. Question is really, did he take it mainly to have the extra sustain while fighting for the boss? Did they think that would be worth it? But the stuns alone would have done a lot here. What I also liked, by the way, in the last fight, and I thought it was kind of funny, was when ETC just like stage dived and immediately died. He was yeah. trying to dodge a bit of the damage. <laughs> like, I need to live, I need to live. Stage dived on the point, and it was basically like dropping from that high distance, just killed him. That's how it looked like. He, he hit the ground and boom, was dead right away. Yeah, for the rest of the fans out there, Spurity basically just hit him once with a hammer when he fell down. It was basically like someone tried to jump off the top rope to big uppercutted by someone who was playing dead. Absolutely sick battle that we just had there. And Misfits, of course, they lost a lot of the momentum that they built up before. They had the talent advantage going into the battle, but 16 dropped halfway. So with Illidan just wreaking havoc in the backline, it was a massive problem. And I really think one of the biggest problems that Misfits has was that after the fight at the bot lane, a lot of their cooldowns were on their heroic abilities were not ready yet. So they couldn't use the silence, for example, with Malfurion. It's true, they used the gust, but the Damascus boys were able to stay on, uh, stay on the point and they were able to keep tanking through it. The sanctification, like we said, was dropped quite early and didn't block all of the damage, but it blocked enough to buy them time. Time is what Darkbox now needs as he's tried to escape. The gust is used to keep him alive. He immediately drags Alex, but that just gives time for Rebel to catch back up. Alex is isolated and blown up here, but Illidan is still moving forward. Silence being used, Rema Baller in trouble, he's down, can't use his dive anymore. We're having Bloomby with a good stun against Tigers as the root is hitting Brightwing. Crosby is already about to fall and they're trying to take Brightwing now as well. Knappe barely escaping, at least for now, getting Moonfire into the ground though. Jumps to Eternal and it looks like they're able to escape, but it's three deaths against the Damascus boys. And another temple is more or less guaranteeing that we will see the first keep fall. The wave pushing in as well. Yeah, Thurner once again trying to clear, but the Echo Pedal not enough to help him just clear out all these minions, and it will fall here, and the lasers now moving on to that mid-keep from that middle temple. And that fight, so quick, the Illidan jumping very deep into the backside along with Tyrael, and it just gets turned on so quickly as Illidan got separated from his team, and Tyrael got blown up too quickly to have a decent effect. Really well done here by the Misfits in the last fight, and I mean, that of course brought them a massive lead again. The 20 is so close for them now, the first keep is down, and then they can really dominate the map at this point. So they are going to try and make this happen, we see them with great control, and at this point, basically, Damascus boys, they need another team victory, and it's not going to be easy. But we all know what happened yesterday in the game of Damascus boys. They won it at the end on Sky Temple by just winning one single fight and pushing it through with the boss. So Misfits have to make sure that they're not taking uh, this oh, with too much that. confidence. The Gust is dropped. They're trying to take the fight here. The silence is good <laughs> from <laughs> Malfurion, <laughs> and it's turned again. Misfits with the perfect play there, gusting everyone into one area. Rema will not survive this. That is four deaths. <laughs> and they're moving in. One fight at the end is what you said. And one fight at the end 
is what Misfits needed, only they did it from ahead this time. Jeez. They have 20 and they take the game. Get wrecked, son. A gust into the silence and that concludes game number one in the best of five series. Misfits are taking the lead, taking down the Damascus boys on Sky Temple in this best of five. The semi-final and Murden jumping right on top of the victory. Action pose.